Hey guys, thank you so much for all of the love and support that you've shown for my new culinary line, Prep on Kitchen. I absolutely love hearing from you guys and what you think of the products and see pictures of you guys using them. Please continue to tag me. I want to hear all of it. I'm so excited that it's finally out and that you guys have it and you're using it. It really is just a dream come true and I'm going to do everything I can to continue to make and design products that will enrich our lives in the kitchen and hopefully make it easier <laughs> to get homemade meals on the table. So thank you. Thank you so much. One thing that I wanted to show you guys in this video was a couple of tips of how to care for some of your products to prolong the life of your products even more. So let's do it. Okay. Let's start with the prep on kitchen prep board. So this board is super durable. I just throw it in the dishwasher. It cleans it. It sanitizes it. You can hand wash it. I mean, it really can take a lot. This is specifically, I designed this. So it's like your workhorse board in your kitchen. I just leave mine on my counter all the time. But one thing I wanted to show you was if you want more rigidity with your arm that holds your bag into place, I'm going to show you a really easy way to tighten it to your liking. Put the arm in its resting position. And then if you flip it upside down, this is a basic, uh, this is just a little one that I have with a bunch of different sizes, but an Allen key wrench and some pliers. You just simply hold the bolt in place, put the Allen key wrench in and just twist it. So you just twist it to your liking and then do the other side. And again, twist it a little bit. The one main thing is you have to make sure the arm can still glide in the tracks. So if you tighten it too much, the arm might get a little sticky. So tighten it enough so the arm still totally glides and pops into position so we can hold that bag in place. So that's a really easy tip that I just wanted to show you guys. I also want to show you guys how to attach the bag for maximum use. So here we go. So this is how I like to attach a bag that I find is the most ideal. So I open it up so that the, the labels on the top, like this is where it says prep on, and that's kind of a good guide. I put it there specifically to guide you guys of how to pull it through here. So make it so that's facing up and then you lay it down, grab your arm, lift the board and just slide one half of the bag underneath and lay it down. Cause you want it to hold the bag in place. Open the arm. I reach under, you can do this. I have friends that do this and you guys have shown me uh, images of you guys doing that too. That's totally fine too. I like reaching under and pulling it over. So again, the prep on is right there in the center as a guiding line. And then you hold it in place and it's totally ready to go for all your prepping. Then when you're done, simply undo the arm. And then because the bag is sit, the board is sitting on the bag, all the scraps are in there. You just lift it up and everything goes into the bag and then you discard this or put it in your compost or however you guys uh, get rid of your food scraps, depending on your lifestyle. And then you just take this and dispose of it however you normally would and then slide the arm back in, clean it and it's ready for storage. So that's really easy too. just wanted to show you that prep on kitchen, Santoku blade. I love my knife. I use it for everything in my kitchen. It's my go-to super multi-purpose. Um, the knife is dishwasher safe for higher end knives. It's always advised to hand wash them just to prolong the life of them, keep them sharper, longer. Also more high end knives have more iron in them. So they're, they tend to rust a little bit easier, but however, the iron helps make them super durable and strong. I actually hand wash mine a lot to preserve the life of it. I do put it in a butcher block, which is not recommended, but for me, just for ease, it's my first knife that I reach and pull out of my block. If you want to preserve the sharpness of it, you should store it in the sheath in your drawer. But hey, whatever works for you guys and makes your lives easier is what we're all going for. My blue carbon steel pan. You guys, this material, it's like the cooler, more fun cousin of traditional cast iron. Like that's how I look at it. They're very similar. They have a lot of the same attributes, but they're super different personalities. However, this pan is temperamental. I do call it my diva pan. It doesn't like to sit in the sink. It doesn't like to sit in the water. It doesn't like to be in the dishwasher. It does take a little bit of maintenance, but when it's on, it is on, which is why I call it my diva pan. <laughs> Another thing that's really cool about carbon steel 
is that it creates, it gets like this patina the more you use it that's individual to that specific pan. So your patina is gonna be different from mine. The colors will change and darken and it'll be totally individual to you, which I think is cool and exciting. When you're finished cooking, a simple way to reseason, I just use organic canola oil. I like using vegetable oil for its higher smoking point. Just drizzle it in. Quick wipe all the way around the inside and you're done. Super easy. That's a very quick reseasoning. If you're doing something that might have stripped a little bit of your natural nonstick, we're going to turn on the heat. So I have a flame on. We're going to drizzle in some oil, wipe it all over with a paper towel to do a really great reseasoning. We're actually going to heat the oil until you see a little bit of smoke coming off. Don't get scared. It gets, it's a little weird at first, but it's super easy. And then you just let it go for a minute or two, turn it off, quick another wipe and let it cool. So we're going to let this heat up till we start seeing a little bit of the oil smoke off. I don't know if you guys can see it. There's a little bit of smoke coming off here. So I'm just going to turn my flame down a little and I'm going to continue to let it smoke a little bit for about two minutes. Even one minute is better than not doing anything at all. So you let that smoke for a couple minutes. I also have my air conditioner on, so it's blowing the smoke away, but then you just turn it off. Now remember it's still hot. Okay. So just be careful when you go back in with the paper towel, quick little swipe. And then just let it cool and that's a nice reseasoning you just did there. I hope you guys like this video. Subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you know when I put up another one and I'll see you guys soon.